So the wildfire smoke is back along with the full moon and all that stuff on a clear night. The same reason why we bunked out and got rid of all of our stuff has returned a few years later. I think I said back then last year that it was probably going to be the norm and that's the reason why. We could take a look at different radars here and you could see here on the mid-level weight radar that that right there that is coming right over Northeast Ohio is a large smoke plume. If we take a look at the radar, you can see these are clouds. You know, this is clouds that is disappearing here. We can look at the actual clean radar and you could see, you know, there's some cloud formation and all that kind of stuff. But the rest of that smoke. So what do you do? My old way that I thought about it was, well, I need as many rigs as I can. So I'm going to buy two rigs. I'm going to spend like six, seven, eight thousand dollars have these things out in the driveway and get to use them maybe for 20 or 30 nights a year. Then, you know, this time we got this stuff and we're like, oh, we can send one to Texas. Texas has its own problems. I know that right now everything is great at SRO, but let's face it, it's a hell of a gamble to send that much money down there and hope that things like this don't tend to happen as well. So I've kind of thought things through a little bit about what I want to do here on the channel and what I'm all about. By the way, I'm Chad. This is the Easy Astro Images channel. We're going to talk about collecting some photons today with our S50 right there, C-Star, that we've had for about a month and a half, two months. And I've been wanting to think about like how to make a review about this. But everybody's already reviewed it to death. There's really nothing else I can add except for this. The C-Stars, even though they're not perfect right now, are going to be the wave of the future. And I tell you what, if ZWO would drop a 533 thousand dollar C star right now that had like a 50 to 70 millimeter aperture that runs the same way that this thing does, I would have at least two or three of them sitting out in the driveway on every clear night. And I would own nothing else. I've done this for 20 years of buying gear, playing with this, playing with that. I'm not all about a pods. And with all of the amazing software technology that we have now with all of the AI tools and all that stuff, I've demonstrated like this video right here that you could put time on almost any target and get amazing images. And that's what me and like this hobby should always be about like i'm not about collecting a pods some of you guys are going to be into that and all that other stuff i want to collect make pretty pictures to share with my friends myself and you and play with all of the software innovation that is coming let's face it the mount telescope camera innovations are like over like what else can they do zwo even admitted that like it's basically all about trying to combine things now we have the 585 Air with the, the ZWO ASI Air, everything else in it. People ask them at Neef, can we put autofocusers in there? Can we do this? Can we do that? Of course they can do all that when the market depends on it. So the next one that is coming up in their line of telescopes is going to be the S30 Pro. So the S30 was basically just like a price comparison market reaction to like the Dwarf Labs people. Like, well, they have one at $400, so we need to get $400. And of course, all those prices have changed now. So, you know, it is what it is. So the S30 Pro is basically going to have a bigger usable sensor size all in on the 585, which I wouldn't mind having a 50 millimeter s50 pro i wish they would have went that route but i understand why they went with the 30 millimeter so they can still try to capture that lower end price mount market which is what they're trying to do and you know ed ting a lot of you guys probably don't watch his stuff he's been around for years doing the scope reviews website youtube videos and stuff and everything i love the guy very entertaining super knowledgeable hell of an astronomer i'm sure like he can like point out anything in the sky and he made a video about six months ago about the smart telescopes and i wasn't expecting him to be super excited about it he kind of more or less just shit all over the entire idea didn't like the app didn't like this didn't like that he never really talked about going it that far and like 
spending hours on targets like we do anyway, and then giving them the full Namanti process like I did in that full video to show what you can do with no hassle and a $500 complete imaging system that you can throw on a tripod. This thing's on a $50 tripod and like a $20 knockoff Monfrotto ball head running in equatorial mode. You could do 60 second exposures with it now. I only do 30. The total time on target with a decent aperture is all about, you know, it doesn't matter about sub lengths. It's nice that they can do that. We can do flats now. It does a dark frame every time that it does it. Hell, I've done moon shots that I still haven't processed yet. I've done uh, sun shots that I haven't even processed yet. All for $450 because I think I bought mine as a return from Agena. So my biggest thing is that, like, I don't think that there's anybody that should not have one of these in their fleet. Maybe not the S50 or the S30, but the S30 Pro is definitely compelling. I would say if you don't have one of these, maybe to jump in on that, because I know you're going to be super happy with the 585. And even though it's only 30 millimeters of aperture, just having that 585 sensor and the little bit larger frame of view opens up a lot of extra little things that I could get out of using a C star, like, you know, the mosaic mode and everything, how it works with the alt as type of configuration is a little bit clunky. So there's just some objects like, especially coming up this summer that would just be amazing to capture with a larger format sensor on one of these. Now, of course we've got the Roken on system and all that kind of stuff. But you know, as I've actually been playing with the RC six and I've been transitioning and putting the Roken on, get ready to put it back on. It's sitting back there on the bench. It's just like, there's been nights that I've just taken the sea star and stuck it in the driveway that I just don't want to mess with like Nina and autofocus fails and filters getting stuck and just all of the shit just cut that goes along with it. Like I've done it for years and you know, for what I can get amazing images out of this freaking C star run it on the app. The coolest thing too is like, I can actually download the net, the app natively on my MacBook Pro, and then I can do, we can do like live streaming right here and look at images that are coming in off the, the Sea star So for like the star parties and the EAA type of stuff that you can do with it, it just opens up an entire world. Now, are there things inside of it that I wish that I could do as an advanced photographer? Yes. Do I understand that? Like they'll probably never be there. Yes. But it's still very, very extremely capable and very, I've had one instance where I did a plan to go to multiple targets and it did fail the autofocus. Like it autofocused, but it was out of focus. So it wasn't smart enough. Maybe that's been fixed with like a current firmware update. I'm not sure. But last night the target, the crescent that I was wanting to image didn't clear my trees until midnight. I put the C star out there, got everything calibrated, left it on. I run it off of like a Ryobi battery pack thing and it just runs all night long. No problem. I've got 400 images here that I need to go through. We're going to use SETI Astro Suite to go through the calling and get rid of the good, the bad ones and keep all the good ones. And then Cyril has like went all in with C star and they've got the filters all built for you for, for their spectrophotometric color calibration for C star. They've got the C star automatic like stacking app. If you don't want to use anything else, or you could just take everything and throw it into pics and site and just do everything as advanced as you want. Like it's literally the same. And again, you put enough time on a target it's going to come out really good. So that's just kind of my whole pitch about the C star is that I plan on again, to just keep on a heavenly leaning on and using this thing. If a C star S 50 pro comes out with a 533 or some kind of camera like that at a thousand bucks, I'm in Celestron origin Rasa six, not a good camera, like $3,000 plus not a good deal. Like, they missed the mark on that one. They could have like scaled something back and gave us, they, they, they shot for the moon, which I totally appreciate, but ZWO is 
not dumb enough to do something like that, you know, which is why they did the S30 because they're all about trying to maintain and keep market share and not really give us what we want. I, my one frustrating thing about large companies is that give us what we want. The dwarf labs people or whatever, they could do the exact same thing. But right now my money is on ZWO because they've got unlimited resources. They can do this long game as much as they want. I do guarantee by the end of the year, we're going to have an S50 Pro with like a 585 or a hopefully a 533 sensor, some upgraded stuff built into there, some upgraded functionality, and still the easy app that you can just do everything right here off of your phone. So I hope I'm right. Keep the price down. You know, that five, $6,000 rig, you could have three or four of these things pointed at multiple. You could have a whole field of them pointed at multiple different targets or at the same target and knock out literally like what? 30 hours of, if you had three of them, 10 hour night, 30 hours of data on one target in one night. Just think about that for half the cost of what you got in your system now. So there's a lot to think about, about how we can actually look at this and address our hobby. Still saving money. And, you know, again, you're getting over on these clear smokeless nights because you've got half the money invested into it. You're collecting four times as much data on those slim nights that you have. So that's it, guys. We got more coming up on the channel. Sorry, it's been a while, but we've been a little bit busy with life. So we will talk to you all later. Let me know your comments below. Peace.